Integration by parts is the integration techniques we will be looking at in this video. Now, before you can do look at integration by parts, you must be familiar with differentiation using the product rule, and you must be familiar with substitution and integration. Now, when we looked at substitution and integration, what we did was trying to undo the chain rule of differentiation. So working backwards from the chain rule. And now with integration by parts, we're sort of undoing the product rule of differentiation. So let us look at the types of integrals we will see, and then we'll look at the technique. So here's just some examples of integrals we're going to calculate using integration by parts. As you can notice, in each case, we've got two functions that are multiplying, and they're not really closely linked. They don't have much in common. The one is not the other one's derivative. If that was the case, then we would be using substitution. But we've got two functions that aren't linked that much. So we will look at how to deal with that type of integrals. And then also sine inverse x, the inverse trig functions, and lin of x. They do not look like the others, but integration by parts is the technique we use to solve these. So let us look at the product rule. The product rule for differentiation states if I've got function f times function g, then the derivative is f of x times g prime x plus g of x times f prime x. Now, if I integrate both sides with respect to x, I've got d dx of f of x, g of x, dx is equal to the integral of f of x, g prime x, dx, plus the integral of g of x, f prime x, dx. Now, on the left-hand side, the antiderivative of the derivative gets me back to my function. We're not doing much yet on the right-hand side. So what we're going to look at now is we are going to see making this term the subject of the formula. But I'm going to write it on the other side because it's nice on this side. But the integral of f of x g prime x dx is then equal to f of x gx minus the integral of g of x f prime x dx. And that is how integration by parts is going to work. We're going to look at integrals of this form and we're going to use this formula to actually integrate. Now, all the f of x's and g of x's can become a bit messy and confusing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use functions u and v. I'm just going to call them u and v to simplify it, where the derivative of u, the, or the differential du, and the differential dv is what we're going to be using. So this will then be the integral of u. Now, g prime x dx is then the differential dv, if v is equal to g of x. Then the differential dv is g, dv is g is derivative in x, dx. And if f of x is equal to u, then the derivative, the differential du is f is derivative in x, dx. So the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. And that's what we're going to use, and I will show you how we use that. All right, so that's written in the top right corner for easy reference. So let's look at this first example. The antiderivative of x times cos x. So I must assign u and dv. I'm looking at this as u and this portion as dv. Now we will look shortly what happens, why we choose them that way around. That will become clear. And what to do if we make a wrong choice. So let's take a look. I'm going to say let u be equal to x and dv be equal to cos x dx. If u is x, then du is just dx. That one's pretty straightforward. If dv is cos of x, then we say, well, what must v be? v must then be sine of x for the differential dv to be cos of x dx. Just take note, v can be sine of x plus any constant. I'm just choosing my constant to be zero because I'm choosing a function v for which dv looks like that. So to simplify matters, we're choosing the function where the constant is zero. You can use a constant and say plus five or something like that, but you will see it works out the same. So let's simplify it and choose a function that works nicely. So now if I go to the formula, 
This integral is then equal to u times v, which is x, times sine x, minus the integral of v du. So it's sine x dx. Now we haven't integrated yet, but we've taken this integral that looked a little bit complicated, and we simplified it to one of our standard integrals. So that's x times sine x, minus the antiderivative of sine x is minus cos x, so it's plus cos x, plus the integration constant c. So as simple as that. Let's look at the next example. x times e to the power x. All right. Again, I'm going to let this part be u and this part dv. But then I'm going to show you that it works, and then I'll show you what happens if we don't do it that way, if we choose wrong. Because it's not always in the right order. So if I say let u be equal to x, then du is dx. And dv is equal to e to the power x dx. That means v is just e to the power x. So this integral is then uv, which is x times e to the power x, minus the integral of v du e to the power x dx. And that is x times e to the power x, and the antiderivative of e to the power x is minus e to the power x plus c. So a quick and easy, a simple way to solve that integral. But now, let's say I chose differently. Let's say I looked at this integral, x times e to the power x dx, and I think u has to be e to the power x, and dv is the other combination, x dx. Let's see what happens. If we choose u equal to e to the power x, then du is e to the power x dx. And v, if I have dv as x times dx, v must be a half x squared. Then my integral will become u times v, so it's a half x squared times e to the power x, minus the integral of v du, a half x squared times e to the power x dx. Now notice our integral became more complicated. This is even messier than what I started with. And the aim of integration of our part is to make it simpler. So if you see, when I chose my u and v correctly, it simplified the integral. In this case, I made a mistake. I chose wrong. It made it more complicated. So we're just not going to do it that way. But notice, when you do integration by part, sometimes we choose wrong. You test it. You see if it works. If it doesn't work, you try something else. Right. And always remember, once you've integrated, once you've got an answer, you can differentiate that answer and see if you had it correctly. So if you can differentiate, you can test all your answers. All right, x squared times lin x dx. So yet again, what do we choose as u and what do we choose as v? Well, in the previous two examples, we chose the x part as u. So let's see what happens if we do that. Let u be equal to x squared and dv be equal to lin x dx. There's already a problem. I can find du, that's 2x dx, but I can't find v. What is the antiderivative of lin x? That's not one of our standard integrals. So we can't do that. So we try again. I say let u be equal to lin x. Why? Because I can differentiate lin x. I can't integrate it, but I can differentiate it. And then dv is equal to x squared dx. So let's see where this leads us. du is then 1 over x dx. And v is a third x cubed. If I go back to my integral, that is then u times v. So it's a third x cubed times lin x minus the integral of v du, a third x cubed times 1 over x dx. Now that looks a little bit messy, but if we just group the like terms together, we get the integral this x cubed divided by x is x squared. So it's a third times the integral of x squared dx, which is straightforward. So that's a third x cubed times lin x minus a third times a third x squared plus oh, x cubed plus c. So there we go. A third x cubed lin x minus 1 over 9 x cubed plus c. So that is using integration by parts and selecting the right one. And we'll look at more examples in the next video.
on how to use integration by parts.